Hi, I'm Wendy Valencia from wendyvalencia.com. In an effort to get major meal planning underway, I decided to clean out, de-ice, and organize our chest freezer. Although, I gotta tell you, because my entire extended family is from the South, we don't call it a chest freezer, we call it a deep freezer. So you're gonna hear me say deep freezer, just know that I mean chest freezer. So in this house, we have a mammoth deep freezer in our garage that I'm pretty sure is older than I am. I'm not gonna lie, it's rusty in places and falling apart after decades of use, but it still works, which is really all that matters. It doesn't have to be pretty to be functional. And when we're rolling in cash, Mauricio and I are gonna have one of those beautiful, professional, like upright freezers with everything labeled and organized. And it's gonna be lovely, <laughs> but until that happens, we just have to make do with what we have. So having a deep freezer can save you truly some serious cash because you're able to buy things in bulk when they're on sale. And you know, my family, we're big ribeye eaters, not me, cause I'm pretty much vegetarian, but everybody else in my family is a big ribeye eater. So when I see ribeye steaks on sale, I can load up. Yeah, I'm one of those people like at the grocery store, like filling my cart with meat when the meat's on sale. Plus when money's tight, we can cut back on grocery expenses and eat the freezer or our pantry which we did in April to July of this year, and we cut way back on our groceries. Well, but that wasn't because of groceries. That was because of 2020 and the hell that it is, and we didn't want to leave the house. <laughs> so now that I've quit Home Chef to cut back on food expenses, I had to get my freezer more organized. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, quitting Home Chef, I actually did a cost like broke down Home Chef. It was super analytical, super fun to do. It was probably one of the more fun videos that I feel like I've made in a long time because I like analyzing that kind of stuff. And so I'll link that down in the description box if you want to check that out. It was fun. I had a good time. So let's go through the steps that I went through to clean out and reorganize the deep freezer. So if you ever want to do this yourself, you'll know what you're up against. <laughs> especially if your deep freezer is as big as mine. So step number one, I checked out all the options. First, I reviewed what options there are when it came to chest freezer storage, which admittedly was very short. It, there really are not a lot of options. First, there's bins like using Dollar Tree bins or milk crates or storage totes or wire baskets. Next, there is stackable plastic food storage containers in various different sizes. There's just using dividers to separate the freezer into quadrants. And then of course there's like a hanging freezer basket that you can purchase as well. And a lot of deep freezers actually come with a hanging freezer basket. Or you can use a combination of any of the above. So step two, make your pick. After extensive research, because I do nothing if I don't research, I decided the best way to organize my deep freezer was with bins because we needed two solid stackable levels because our deep freezer does come up like midway up my chest. So we definitely needed two, two levels and a level that I could pull out easily. And plus you've peeked into other areas of my life and you know that I use bins a lot and they work great for my life. So why not use them in a freezer too? And truth be told, you could really use any type of bin bucket you know, whatever in the freezer. But for our purpose, we needed something super sturdy because we got a lot of meat in our freezer and meat is heavy. And I am not exaggerating when I could say I could easily fit two to three sides of beef in this thing and it would still have room for Costco. <laughs> Obviously with bins, the choices were endless, but we wanted something that we knew would freeze well and not all plastic does that. Like cheap plastic, when you put it in the freezer, it breaks into really scary, dangerous shards that are akin to glass. And we wanted something that would stack easily. And our freezer wasn't gonna be pretty because it already isn't pretty. And there is so much food in there. We weren't gonna have one of those pretty, you know, freezers where everything's like standing on its side and it's easy to read now. Now we needed sturdy. 
So we opted for milk crates because I knew they were made to hold heavy, heavy items and would be great for frozen things. But I knew better than to buy anything before I measured absolutely everything. So in step three, we measured and we decided the layout and made our purchase. So the very thing I had to do first was measure the interior of the freezer. And I admittedly, this was kind of a pain in the butt because I have a very full freezer and I had to get to the bottom of it and both sides. The sides, not so hard. The bottom, difficult. Note to self, this wasn't a problem for me because I knew about it. Um, but if you are leaving your freezer full, one side of a chest freezer almost always has a hump where the motor is. So it's not like a solid rectangle most of the time. If you wanna have a good mental image of how much digging I had to do to measure this thing, here's what it looked like before. And once I got down to the bottom on the side, which was no easy task, mind you, I measured it and then I measured it again just to make sure. So then I had to do math, which I hate. And that's kind of ironic considering that I made a pretty amazing side hustle based 100% on budgeting, which is all math. <laughs> so another important thing to note is when you are measuring for how much space versus your your bins or whatever you're going to use make sure one to leave room for your hands you cannot have bins packed up side by side with no room to pull the bins out if you are planning on doing that because what's the point why use bins if you can't move them? So after a lot of math, I decided that I would need eight 19 by 13 by 11 rectangular milk crates. And another note is because milk crates are super thick, you have to make sure that the dimensions are the exterior of the crate, not the interior of the crate. But on the websites I went to, it provided both measurements, which was awesome. So then I started on the hunt for the cheapest milk crates I could find and ultimately settled on milkcratesdirect.com. Who knew such a thing existed? They were way cheaper than the ones on Amazon, but you did have to buy them in bulk. And I liked them because not only were they the cheapest, but I could pick whatever color I wanted. So me being me, I picked gray because, you know, gray. Like, everything I have is gray and this like seafoam color and navy that's like everything I own. The downside to this website is you do have to order them in sets of six and I only needed eight but honestly I'm always looking for a good sturdy sturdy like storage bin so I went ahead and ordered the 12 and waste not want not and I made sure that those four extra were put to good use immediately and actually I use them all over the place. Most recently I put them on my front porch as Halloween decor and they'll be back out there as soon as we put the Christmas stuff out. So step four, I made the categories for each bin. With eight milk crates, I would need to come up with eight categories for separating my food. And since the bulk of our deep freezer is meat, as I mentioned, I keep frozen veggies and sauces in the kitchen freezer it made it very easy for me to come up with ways to group my items. So this is the way we divided up ours. We divided up beef, chicken, pork, fruits and vegetables, and french fries all in one, dairy and deli, turkey, seafood, and bread. And organizing where you know where everything is is by far the most important step. What's the point in doing all of this if you're just gonna have to dig through the bins to find out what you're looking for? So step five, yeah, pull everything out of the freezer and get to work. And I honestly assumed this project was gonna take me several hours start to finish, but the truth is I was so excited to finally do this and have an organized deep freezer that I tackled it pretty much the first free day I had, like first thing in the morning. So the easiest way for me to do this was line up all the bins on the floor and put things into each bin where they were gonna go as they came out of the freezer. And it was actually a pretty easy step and I only really had to ask Mauricio like two or three or five times what something was that had gotten thrown into the freezer without a label. And I know it wasn't me because I have labels on everything. I think I have a label on Melina's forehead that says Melina because 
that's who I am. So pro tip, no matter the size of your freezer, by the time you pull the third thing out of the freezer, your hands are gonna start freezing and start to really hurt. So I highly recommend if you're, you're doing this to put on some gloves. And I actually used our grill gloves because they're made to protect against severe thermal changes. So I don't know why they don't make like mittens out of this stuff because I couldn't feel anything after an hour of pulling stuff out. And they worked like a champ. The best part of this was that I did find a few <laughs> Claffy's frozen cocktails in there. They're, they're kind of like flavor ice, but with alcohol. And that made this whole thing way more fun. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It was the morning. I didn't actually drink them as I was doing it. I did have them at after dinner that night though. So once all the meat was in the appropriate containers, I had to work really quickly to de-ice our freezer, which like I said, is older than God himself. Because of that, we didn't really worry too much about dents and scrapes. And so I pulled out the like meat tenderizer and started banging it like a hammer on the ice using the, you know, the pokey side to break up the ice chunks. And because the top of our freezer is a tad bit warped and and we leave a sledgehammer on it to make sure it lays flat. We do have a little bit of air leakage, so we get pretty solid ice buildup around the rim. And so I had a good like solid inch of ice around the rim from the last time I de-iced about two years ago. So after about five minutes, I had removed a chunk like, I don't know, like this bag. It, it was a sizable amount but i knew it was going to take me the better side of an hour to an hour and a half to remove it all and honestly i guess Rizio got a little annoyed with all my banging because he came out to the garage to see what i was doing and in my excitement to organize i had neglected to mention that i was reorganizing the freezer so he was a little shocked when he got out there so he took one look at me and started laughing and said something along the lines of you're so cute and then grabbed a crowbar and within five minutes, all of the ice was at the bottom of the freezer because he went <laughs> So then we grabbed our kid sized like shovel, snow shovel, and scooped all of the ice out and dumped it in the driveway. And Melina was super excited because it looked a lot like snow. So she donned on her winter pants and jacket and put on her snow boots and started playing in the freezer ice. So step six, once all the fun was had by Melina, it was time to load the bins back into the freezer. I instinctively knew that I needed to put the stuff I accessed the least on the bottom, which is logical, but these were also the least full bins. And in my house, the most used stuff, like the most used bins would be beef, chicken, pork, and vegetables. But each of these bins easily weighed 50 pounds. And as I was putting everything into the freezer, I there and then vowed that we did not need to keep that much meat on hand at any one time. We had more ribeyes and chicken breasts than you can possibly imagine. So we're slowly, slowly working through everything to get it to like a more reasonable, neatly organized amount. <laughs> so that meant the containers on the bottom are the dairy and deli, the turkey, the seafood, and the bread. And it's nice to know exactly where everything was. Well, until the day I needed the frozen hot dog buns. So then once everything was in, it was amazing to know exactly what I had and where everything was in the freezer until the day I needed the frozen hot dog buns. So I'm gonna give you a little pro tip. Know where your bottom bins are. So. For us, the first month or so, I didn't need anything from the bottom layer, and I kind of forgot the placement of each one. Then one day I needed a new pack of Costco sliced deli ham, a pack of cream cheese, and hot dog buns, all in the same day. I don't know why I needed them all in the same day, but I did. And I very quickly realized that I had absolutely no clue which bin was where on the bottom layer. So after lifting each of the top bins out and each one of those top bins probably weighs 50 pounds, I realized I needed to run less and lift more weights at the gym. And I also came up with a good solution. I took our freezer labels 
and stuck them to the inside lid of the freezer, showing me what was on top and what was on bottom. And never again would I have to go rooting around the whole freezer. So if you like this video, I recommend you watch this one on how I organize my laundry so that it gets done with like machine-like precision every week because if you know anything about me, I am like the most organized person you will ever meet. I wish. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next one.